So, this should tell us how many solar cells we need. And it should be 36. As you know, I built my solar panel, which was 63 watts out of 36 solar cells. So, 63 divided by 1.75 equals 36. So, it checks out. So, you just plot the same thing. If you want to build a 90 watt solar panel, divide that by 1.75 and you'll get your answer for how many solar cells you need. So, again, I'm using this 1.75. This is not for every solar cell, but I'm using this for the evergreen solar cells, the ones that I bought. So, depending on how many watts each solar cell produces, uh, depends on how many solar cells you're going to need of that type of solar cell. So now, to just to give you an idea, we're basically done with this example here. Let me just go into why I need the analog amplifier. Basically, and I know I'm saying basically a whole lot, but anyway, we have a basic solar panel, solar cell, sorry, solar cell. Now, what we know about this solar cell is it produces, let me write this in a different color. It produces 1.75 watts. We just found that out. And this is the evergreen solar cell. Let's remember that. It produces 1.75 watts. It produces 0.5 volts. And it produces 3.5 amps. One solar cell. Now, let's say that our solar panel was, I mean, our solar cell was the crack. Or we received a broken solar cell. And now we just have, we're just left with this type of solar cell here. Basically, there I, get, I said basically again, but anyway, this solar cell would just still produce 0.5 volts. And you'll think, man, how is that? But it, it will. This is how it works. But what will be affected is the amps that it produces. And again, that's the reason I'm going to show you an example because it's kind of hard to believe just looking at it. But if, let's say now instead of 3.5 amps, we are getting, let's just make up a value here, 2. Point, I don't know, 2.2 .2 amps. And if you look at that, you think, well, it don't, it might not affect it too much. At least I'm still getting some amps. Well, that's true, but let's see how many uh, watts you're now producing. Let's say we got 36 of these broken solar cells all producing 2.2 amps. All right, so let me just write the original values up here. Remember when we had a perfectly working solar panel with all the solar cells uh, intact? We had 63 watts. Again, this is for the entire solar panel, and we had 18 volts, and we had 3.5 amps. All right, so let's go back to our formulas that we just learned. Or it's just a little bit. So to find the watts, we have P equals V times I. And just plugging in our values here. I'm going to use this value this time for our amps. It's going to be plugged into our I. So we're going to have P equals 18 volts times 2.2 .2 amps. And let's plug that into our calculator. We have 18 times 2.2. .2. And as you can see, that was a dramatic decrease. 39.6 watts now. So instead of 63 watts, we're now producing only 39.6 watts, and that's a huge difference from 63 watts. So, I really don't recommend going with broken solar cells, but uh, just uh, experiment with it. I mean, why not? But again, in a moment here, I'm going to just show you how that works and see how it's affected when I do crack a real solar cell and see how the amps are affected and not the voltage. So. That's basically how it works, and again, the amps is what's affected and not the voltage. And the reason I needed that analog amp meter is because if I see that my amps on a, a, a direct sunlight day 
or when I'm receiving direct sunlight, if I see my amps are not getting at least close to 3.5, then I know something is wrong in that solar panel. So it's basically just an alerting system for me. But if I got a voltage meter and I was still getting 18 volts, that wouldn't really tell me anything because like I said, the voltage is not affected uh, from this if we did have a problem in there. So that's why I just needed an analog amp meter for it and that's why I recommend you get some type of device that can let you know if something is wrong with your solar panel without you having to hook up a digital multimeter to it every time. So. Now let's just go outside and uh, experiment with a real solar cell just to see how it works. Just give you an idea of how this all plays out. Hey guys, to speed up the process of me getting the rest of the videos out, just subscribe to this video as it does show me you guys are interested and I try to speed up the process of getting the rest of the videos out as I do have to edit these and I do try to make them interesting. So again, just subscribe to the video and I try my best to get them out a little quicker for you guys.